Hello everyone, this is Anu Chedi back again with another video by AMS Group of Institutes. Now in today's video, we will be talking about the effects of taking a loan or a debt on the EPS of a company. Before we move forward towards the effect of debt on the EPS, let's firstly see what is a levered company and what is an unlevered company. Levered company is such a company in which the capital structure includes debt. That is, in ke capital structure mein loan hota hai. Or unlevered companies wo hoti hai jin ke capital structure mein koi loan nahi hota hai. To, ye calculate karne ke liye, sab sab hame dekhna padega what is EPS and what is the formula. So, EPS as you can see on the screen behind me is the profit after tax divided by the number of shares of the company. So let's move forward with an example which is the best way to understand any concept. So you have been given that the funds required are 30 lakh rupees. The interest rate is 10%, the tax rate is 30% and the EBIT is 5 lakh rupees. Plus one additional information is that the face value of one share of the company is 10 rupees. So, there are a few conditions as well. The first one is that there is no debt in the capital structure, that is, it is an unlevered company. In the second one, there is a debt for 10 lakh rupees, and in the third one, a debt of 20 lakh rupees. So, let's see how debt affects the EPS of a company. So, let's go for the solution. Firstly, we'll start with the EBIT. We have already seen that the earnings before interest and tax was 5 lakh rupees. So, 5 lakhs is the EBIT. Next, in situation 1, the interest will be 0 because there is no debt involved. So, the interest is 0. Hence, the EBT that is earnings before tax will be same that is 5 lakh rupees. Next, we'll calculate the taxes on this, that is 30%. So that will come out to rupees 1,50,000. So 1,50,000 will be the tax which has to be deducted. So the profit after tax available for distribution to the shareholders will be rupees 3,50,000. So 3,50,000 rupees. Now in this, there is no debt. So all the capital, that is the 30 lakh rupees, has been financed through shares. The number of shares will be 30 lakh rupees divided by the face value of one share, that is 10 rupees. So the number of shares will be 3 lakh. So 3 lakhs is the number of shares. So if we apply the EPS formula, we will get the answer of EPS that is 1.16 in this case. So 1.16. Next we'll move on to situation number 2 in which there was a debt of 10 lakh rupees. So let's start with the example. The EBIT will remain the same, that is 5 lakh rupees. So 5 lakhs in the EBIT. Next will be the interest. In situation 2, there is an interest of 1 lakh rupees. Now why so? Because there is a loan of 10 lakhs and the interest rate was 10%. So there will be an interest of 1 lakh rupees. So we'll deduct 1 lakh rupees from the EBIT and then we will get the earnings before tax which will be 4 lakh rupees. So the EBT will be 4 lakh rupees. Now we'll go for the tax that is 30%. It will come out to rupees 1 lakh 20,000. So 1 lakh 20,000 again deducted as tax. So the profit after tax available for distribution to the shareholders will be 2 lakh 80,000 rupees. So, 2,80,000 is the profit after tax. Now, the number of shares will be calculated as the amount of share capital. Now, mind you, the total requirement was 30 lakh rupees. In case number 2, we have taken a debt of 10 lakh rupees. So, the equity share capital will be 20 lakh rupees. That divided by the face value of one share, which is 10 rupees. 
So the total number of shares is 2 lakhs. So 2 lakhs is the number of shares. So if I put this in the EPS formula, we will have a EPS of 1.4. Next, we'll move to case number 3. Over here, the debt which we have taken is 20 lakh rupees. So let's start with the example. The EBIT will remain the same, that is 5 lakh rupees. So 5 lakh rupees is the EBIT. The interest now will be 20 lakhs multiplied by 10%, that is 2 lakh rupees. So 2 lakhs is the interest amount. So we will have a balance of 3 lakh rupees as the earnings before tax. So 3 lakh rupees. Now we'll calculate the 30% of this as tax, that is 90,000 rupees. So 90,000. We'll subtract this and then we will get a profit after tax of 2 lakh 10,000 rupees. Now in this, the number of shares will be, yes, the balance amount in the share capital, that is only 10 lakhs. Now why 10 lakhs? The overall requirement was 30 lakh rupees. You have taken a loan of 20 lakh rupees. So 10 lakhs have been financed by selling shares, that is through share capital. So the number of shares will be 10 lakhs divided by the face value of one share, which is 10 rupees. So it will come out to 1 lakh shares. So the number of shares is 1 lakh. So hence, the EPS will come out to 2.1. Now let's list out the EPS in all these cases. In the first one, the EPS was 1.16. In the second one, it was 1.4. And in the third one, it came out to 2.1. So here you can see, as and when we increase the amount of debt in the capital structure, the EPS, that is the earnings per share, keeps on increasing. Now the reason behind this is very complicated. So let's go for that reasons. The main reason is that the ROI, that is the return on investment, is more than the interest which you are paying for your debt. So let's calculate the ROI. The formula is EBIT divided by the capital employed multiplied by 100. The EBIT is 5 lakhs, capital employed is 30 lakhs multiplied by 100. So the ROI is 16.67%. Over here, we are earning 16.67% and if we take a debt, we will have to pay back 10%. So over here, since the ROI is more than the interest which you are paying, the EPS will keep on increasing as you increase the leverage in your company. This is it for today's video. If you found this video to be useful, then please give it a thumbs up and forward this link to your fellow peers and students. And as always, happy learning.